morning and welcome to the LIFE program. We are here this morning with Regina Vitola, reference librarian extraordinaire, and she is going to be giving us a presentation on ASMR. Now, I've heard of this vaguely, and I know that it's an internet phenomenon and it's really interesting and it does a lot of stuff with sound, but I'm going to be real honest here. I don't know everything <laughs> and I have no idea what this actually means or what it's supposed to do. So I'm really interested to get to learn about this. Regina, if you would, yes. I'm going to go ahead and do you want me to start sharing slides? Thanks, Rachel. Well, um, you can pull them up in one moment, but I just want to say mm -hmm. I can I can I can't guarantee that my voice is going to give you tingles during this presentation, but hopefully you will experience some kind of tingles. Um, but yeah, so like Rachel was saying, most people by now have heard the term ASMR or have stumbled across an ASMR video online. Um, but so right now, uh, Rachel's gonna go ahead and pull up the presentation and um, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give a little intro with and ask some questions, so. Does the low rumble of a thunderstorm and the pitter patter of rain against your window lull you to sleep? Does the sound of ocean waves gently lapping the shore make you feel exquisitely relaxed? Or perhaps you prefer the sounds of material objects, the crisp tapping of fingernails on plastic, the clicking and clacking of Legos or wooden blocks, the sound of a pencil dashing cursive across a page, or the crinkle of a mylar protected library book as you crack it open for the first time. If any of these sounds, visuals, or even a memory of these things elicits a tingly sensation from your head to your shoulders, then you have experienced ASMR. Okay, so you may wonder why I'm talking about ASMR today, and that's uh, this topic's often perceived as taboo, although in uh, over the past year it has entered the mainstream somewhat, but it's because this Friday is International ASMR Day. And um, ASMR Day has been observed annually on April 9th since 2012. Um, I first stumbled across the ASMR internet subculture in 2015 while looking for a white noise video to listen to while studying and um, a white noise video to help me fall asleep faster at night. So as soon as I saw my first ASMR video, um, I was I was riveted by the video, but I jumped onto Google to learn more about it. And I found a few articles that described the tingly sensation I felt while listening to the videos. Um, when I was reading these articles, of course, you know, reading about ASMR and having it explained to me, um, my life made a little more sense because I've always loved the sound of rustling paper or tapping on wood, um, among other subtle environmental sounds. But even as a child in kindergarten, one of my favorite activities was playing with the wooden building blocks and then building something and knocking them over because I loved the sound of the, the wooden building blocks. And um, I, I think I should probably also mention that I am extremely sensitive to sound. And this is something that you'll find is common among um, many musicians. And once upon a time in another life, I, I studied music in college and I was uh, I majored in music. and um, so I listening, hearing ASMR described and reading about it in these articles, it all made sense to me that, you know, I'm sensitive to sound. I love music. I love uh, sounds, you know, a symphony of sounds. So this made sense to me. But ASMR, when described or when people first stumble across the videos, um, some people are baffled by it. And some people claim that they've never experienced tingles from a sound or from a, um, a visual. So I think that um, talking about it today and celebrating it on April 9th will um, help give ASMR more exposure and um, make it less taboo when uh, people stumble across it. Okay, Rachel, so if you'll go ahead and move on to the next slide. So before we unpack the definition of ASMR, we're going to view this two minute montage. So pay close attention to your body and see if you experience any tingles.
you here for an eye exam and frame fitting, correct? Great. Well, would you mind if we just start with an eye exam? Okay, so let me know in the comments if you experience any kind of tingles around your shoulders or your scalp or your neck while listening to some of those videos or triggers. Um, I'm curious to know how many people actually have a uh, physical response to those sounds. Um, I know I, some of our my fellow librarians here, um, Jane, for one, she Jane is saying yes. I also have a response to it. Great. Okay, so we can move on to the next slide. So Ronwen uh, is saying it's not a physical response, but it's definitely pleasurable. Yeah, it's kind of like um, I mean, I'm really into um, like sound therapy, you know, um, and kind of kind of reminds me of that, and like you know, just like sound therapy, like yes. a little massage for your brain. Yes, exactly. Okay, moving on to the next slide. Thank you, Bronwyn. Um, okay, so what is ASMR? And ASMR is, uh, can be defined in a few different ways, but it stands for Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. And it's, um, as you can see here, it's a perceptional phenomenon characterized by a tingly feeling in the brain or scalp. And it is um, highly subjective. So what makes people feel ASMR or respond to certain triggers is subjective. Um, so it's different for everyone. Everyone uh, has a different trigger. But um, uh, so ASMR can also be defined as a response to certain audio or visual stimuli known as triggers, which elicit tingly, pleasant feelings of calm, relaxation, and well-being. This tingly sensation typically originates in the scalp and travels down the spine and can sometimes extend to the back, arms, and legs. And it varies in intensity. So Rachel, you can go ahead to the next slide and should be able to see um well we'll come back to this one if you'll if you'll go to the next one see here okay here we go so in this image it shows where the tingles typically originate on most people and um they follow a certain pattern so for me when i'm listening to videos that trigger my asmr response they do always start somewhere behind my ears or on the side of my head and slowly move back uh back and down my neck and shoulders and on my back. So uh, when I when I looked at this this image, I thought, yeah, that's exactly how I feel it. Um, but it, it's a pleasurable tingling, and as Bronwyn mentioned, it's like a sound therapy. It's even if you can't say that you feel tingles, it can still elicit some kind of pleasure response in the brain. Um, and Rachel, if you'll go back to the next slide, please. So. Right here, you'll see this is um, on from Google Trends. This is an ASMR YouTube search from the past five years. And you'll notice around uh, 2019, there is a there is a spike. And then we have a sustained spike of uh, searches for ASMR on YouTube. And what this graph doesn't show is that um, most of these searches, uh, people stumbled across ASMR searching for relaxation videos. So a lot of people, you know, at this time in 2019 and of course the 2020 and 20 uh, now in 2021 we're searching for ways to relax via youtube and that's how they discovered asmr videos 
Um, now, I think it's important to bring up that uh, ASMR content has shot through the roof on YouTube this past year, and that does not come as a surprise to me. As more people have had to stay at home uh, for the quarantine and um, avoid social interactions, and um, some people were still working, some people weren't, but people had more time on their hands, and a lot of people were inspired to create their own ASMR videos and YouTube channels. And um, as the content grew, you know, the, the audience for ASMR grew. So um, there's some interesting research that you can find now in our uh, library databases about COVID in ASMR. Um, there are um, interviews with pregnant women who said that they sought out ASMR videos for um, to calm their anxiety and stress about being pregnant and delivering their child during a pandemic. Uh, there was an interview with a gentleman who said that ASMR videos helped relieve his anxiety and depression um, by relieving his loneliness. He wasn't able to connect with people in real life because of the pandemic, but he felt like he was connecting with these ASM artists online and um, they alleviated a lot of his, um, his symptoms of depression and loneliness. So I think that's something interesting to think about that oh, while we are, you know, we are forced to social distance people this is another way that people are making meaningful connections, and that's through ASMR videos. Okay, Rachel, if you'll skip ahead to the next. There we go. So now unpacking the definition, autonomous, spontaneous self-governing with or without control, sensory, about senses or sensation, meridian signifying a peak, climax, or point of highest development and response, referring to an experience triggered by something external or internal. Um, so, the uh, Jennifer Allen created this, this term in 2010 in response to um, in response to some of the more unprofessional terms that were being used to describe this tingly sensation. And in a 2016 interview with Jennifer Allen, after ASMR started to see a rise in uh, uh, in content on YouTube and uh, with um, of people viewing this content. Uh, she, in her interview, she mentioned that she wanted this more scientific term because uh, people were describing it in a way that um, suggested that ASMR was a sexual experience or feeling, which, um, of course, for many ASM artists and people who uh, enjoy a ASMR will say it has nothing to do with that. So, uh, Rachel, if you'll go ahead to the next slide. Um, so we're going to come back and touch on that topic, but right now we're going to talk about a little bit about the origins of ASMR. Um, so, uh, going back, researchers have looked at meditation, hypnosis, something called biofeedback and white noise, and they've compared the sensations that people get from these, um, these practices to what people feel when they're listening or watching ASMR videos. So of course, um, guided meditations um, and physical awareness, relaxation, and um, the the sound of of the frequency of sound bowls, those all produce similar pleasurable feelings. Um, the same type of feelings you may experience with ASMR. Same thing with hypnosis, um, guided hypnosis, um, turning your focus outward and receiving personal attention from maybe someone who's guiding you through the hypnosis uh, triggers relaxation and maybe a feeling of tingles. And then um, and, and white noise, a lot of people like to go to sleep to white noise. I know some people can't fall asleep unless the ceiling fan is on or the air conditioner is running because that white noise uh, lulls them to sleep, but um, it, helps, it helps create a sense of relaxation that's similar to ASMR. And um, all of these things help reduce stress and they are, are meant to be used as um, relaxation techniques. So there are a lot of similarities between uh, ASMR content and what you would experience through something like meditation. And Rachel, if you'll go to the next slide, please. Now here we have a wonderful 
a graphic of Virginia Woolf with some headphones and she's in front of a mic. So it's as if she's about to start producing her own ASMR video, but you can move ahead to the next slide. Um, we're gonna talk about some of the earliest mentions of ASMR. And when I first started researching ASMR, there was not a lot out there. Um, I was hard pressed to find any type of science journal article, anything in the library databases, but um, our new articles were appearing online on the open web, um, I don't know, uh, monthly as ASMR grew in popularity um, in over the past five years. So um, as I was researching, I stumbled across um, an article that claimed that Virginia Woolf and her 1925 um, uh, Miss Dalloway story mentions something, describes something that is like ASMR. And you can see the quote on there, uh, the letters K and R said the nursemaid and Septimus heard her say K, R, close to his ear, deeply, softly, like a mellow organ, but with a roughness in her voice like a grasshopper's, which rasped his spine deliciously and sent running up into his brain waves of sound, which concussing broke. So that just reading that quote, you can imagine these tingles, um, tingles of sound like going across his brain and then down his spine. And um, a lot of tingle, uh, tingle heads, ASM artists claim that Virginia Woolf was talking about ASMR way before it, uh, it became popular and uh, she just didn't have a word or the terminology for it. Um, Rachel, you can move on to the next slide. So some of the earlier terms um, that we start to see appearing online were in 2007 and people started talking about this ASMR feeling on message boards and health message boards. And um, so some of the first terms appeared on um, website called studyhealth.com and isitnormal.com. So people were started, you know, um, describing what they were feeling when they would hear certain sounds or watch certain videos. And um, these are some of the terms that, or the phrases that people were using to uh, describe the sensation. So we have weird head sensation, unnamed feeling, and attention-induced head orgasm. Now, a term like the last one we just read, head orgasm, brain orgasm, those are terms that people like Jennifer Allen, who um, coined the ASMR, the, the somewhat scientific term, those are uh, terms she was trying to stay away from because most people who experienced ASMR did not want it being confused with some kind of sexual feeling. It, it, was, it was more, than that and it was different than that. So if you can go to the next slide, Rachel. So that brings us to what ASMR is not. And you can skip to the next slide. So it is not sexual and the ASMR community does not like the term braingasm. So they're trying to eradicate those terms. And uh, a lot of people were really happy when Jennifer Allen uh, came up with the ASMR term to start describing this physiological response. And so ASMR is definitely not a fetish or a kink, it's a common misconception, um, and it's not a fluke. So when ASMR was first gaining uh, popularity, um, a lot of people thought, okay, this is just something random. It's, there's nothing scientific about it. Um, but now we have neurologists and researchers um, doing some serious research on the effects of ASMR, and they're finding patterns in brain scans of people um, that experience ASMR. So Rachel, you can go to the next slide. So let's take a look at some ASMR terminology because I know I'm throwing words around like tingles and triggers. Um, so tingles, of course, refer to the sensation that uh, an ASMR trigger produces and triggers are a stimuli that cause the ASMR feeling to occur on, on your scalp or head or neck. And then a tingle head, is a colloquial name for someone who experiences ASMR, and I identify as a tingle head. And um, ASM artists are, of course, the content creators for ASMR videos. Um, Rachel, go ahead and skip to the next slide. Um, 
So going back to triggers, when you listened to that intro video, the montage of sound at the beginning of this presentation, you may have experienced some tingles um, with, or you know, more strongly with one video than another. So um, mouth noises, that is a common trigger for people. And I know this sounds weird, but chewing, crunching, gulping, uh, lip smacking, those are common triggers for people. Breathing sounds, so a loud or soft exhale or yawning. Um, vocal sounds, mostly whispering. That's everyone's biggest trigger is a soft whispering voice or muffled talking in the background. Um, a lot of people get tingles with uh, fricatives, k, f, or the the strong s that that some people have when they they say words um, with s's. And then some people are triggered by low, deep voices. Um, ambient sounds is a big one. So like me, the rustling of paper or plastic, um, writing, tapping, uh, nails clicking, uh, animal noises such as cats purring, that uh, triggers my tingles immensely. Um, some people, it's more, it's more visual for them. So as we saw in one of the, the videos at the beginning, body movements such as hand gestures, um, finger snapping, fluttering fingers, uh, rubbing your fingernails together. Those are huge triggers. And then, um, of course, uh, personal attention. So something that ASMR videos, personal attention ASMR videos have in common with, say, you know, going to see a hypnotist or a therapist is that um, the ASMRists creating these videos try to make eye contact, steady eye contact, and try to net, nod their head um, to show that they're listening to you and they understand you and they tend to ask questions. Um, some examples are in the clinical exam role play videos that a lot of ASM artists produce. Um, a lot of ASM artists produce haircut videos, manicure videos, even um, scalp massage videos or other massage videos uh, because people watch this, but they're, they experience it. So personal attention is a big one for um, tingle heads. Okay, Rachel, you can move on. Okay, so a little bit more about the science of ASMR. I know we kind of, we described it a, uh, a little bit, but uh, you can move to the next slide. So when ASMR first started, again, first started showing up in headlines and like mainstream media, um, there was this debate, is it pseudoscience? Is ASMR real or is it imagined? And um, there wasn't any hard scientific research or studies about this. So uh, between, between uh, 2017 and 2018, we started to see a rise in uh, researchers or neurologists that were taking this phenomenon seriously. They were, uh, they were watching these videos, reading comments, checking out message boards and saying, okay, well, if, if, if this many people are experiencing this and describe it and are connecting over this, there has to be some validity to it. So um, if you'll go to the next slide, Rachel. Here, I'm not even going to pretend that I can accurately describe or explain the science behind this, but um, some studies were conducted um, with people who claim to be tingle heads and people who claim to not experience ASMR and MRI scans were done of their brains as they were listening to triggers or ASMR videos and researchers discovered commonalities um, with the brains of people who claim to be single heads. And um, like I said, here viewing these brain scans, you can see the certain regions that are lit up and that are common among people who do experience um, tingles. And I know that in one of the studies I read that one of the common things they saw were people who listened to ASMR and said they experienced tingles. They had um, regions on both sides of their brain light up and connect, whereas those who didn't experience tingles or said that they, you know, they'd never experienced ASMR did not have um, these regions on both sides of their brains light up. Some of them only had it on one side of their brain. So that's something interesting um, and it's something that we're going to see. I think uh, we're going to be seeing a lot, a lot of research published over the next few years, especially with the rise of um, ASMR and during the pandemic. 
So Rachel, if you'll go to the next slide. So here, in, um, and I just want to mention that everything is linked to in this presentation. So when it's archived, you can go back and if you want to click on any of these articles to read them in depth, you can do that. But this kind of explains, goes into detail about the MRI scans that we just looked at. And Rachel, you can go forward to the next one. Okay, so now this leads us to the question. Does everyone experience ASMR? No, and scientists are still probing this question. So there isn't, there isn't a definitive answer why some people experience ASMR and why some people do not. But, um, but one of the, so some scientists and researchers speculate that it has to do with childhood memories. Um, so researchers are finding that a lot of people who experience ASMR experience, uh, experience triggers or tingles through the memory of a sound. So for instance, if I'm watching a video of someone building a castle with wooden blocks, that triggers a memory that I had when I was five years old building blocks and really enjoying the sound of that and, uh, and, and enjoying the process of that. So it elicits this tingly response. So um, it, it's also tied back to children who were spoken to in soft tones by family members or um, who were exposed to a symphony of sounds at a young age and were taught to enjoy uh, environmental sounds and music. So there's there's a lot of speculation as to why some people experience tingles in ASMR and why some people don't, but there is no hard science or data on that yet, but it is being researched. So hopefully we'll know within the next few years. And I have to, I, I have to bring up here, um, I have, I have made my husband watch several ASMR videos and listen to ASMR videos to try to find one that will elicit the tingle response that I feel strongly with videos. And he does not uh, feel any tingles watching these videos. He kind of, when I first started listening to these videos, he looked at me like I was, you know, a little bit weird, but cool. You know, if it, if it made me feel relaxed, then he was okay with it. Um, but it just, it made me think, okay, well, there are people who do not experience any kind of relaxation or pleasure from these videos, um, and they think it's weird. And that um, that led me to some research about, uh, I believe the term is called misophonia, uh, which my husband does not have misophonia. Most people don't, but misophonia is a condition that's basically the opposite of ASMR. It's people who hear sounds that trigger rage. So certain sounds like um, nails tapping on plastic or the rustling of paper can trigger um, trigger a response in people that make them angry and make them feel repulsed. So I guess it's comparable to fingernails down a chalkboard. So misophonia is um, something that uh, people have discovered they have by trying to listen to ASMR videos and see if they can get the same kind of tingles and relaxation that others have with it. And I thought that was interesting reading about that in my research. Hopefully no one here has misophonia. I'm really glad that I don't have that. But um, Rachel, next slide. So now the genuine health benefits of ASMR, and you can advance. So of course, as we've already uh, discussed, ASMR has been noted to reduce stress relieve insomnia, anxiety and depression, and create connections. So a sense of community or alleviate, um, alleviate loneliness. And there are interviews, again, um, over the past year that have been printed in, in newspapers like the Washington Post, New York Times, um, that uh, discuss how ASMR videos have helped a lot of people cope with the pandemic and with being, um, socially distance and staying isolated at home. So ASMR videos have helped people um, deal with this extreme isolation and stress of not knowing um, what's going to happen day to day. And I think it's, uh, it's something that's grabbed a lot of researchers attention and um, a lot of psychologists and mental health professionals are are researching ASMR and the benefits of ASMR therapy 
um, and seeing how they can incorporate it into their practice or their work with patients. Um, because it is a type of sound therapy, as Bronwyn mentioned earlier. It's a um, something for uh, that helps increase a sense of well-being. So a lot of new research has been published over the past two years on this uh, the health benefits of ASMR. And um, I think it's it's worth noting that where five years ago you couldn't find any scientific research on this, you can now go into uh, databases and journals and find a lot of research on this. Okay, move to the next slide, please. Now, finally, okay, one of my favorite aspects of ASMR is the art part. Okay, so scroll to the next video uh, slide. So you may have had the pleasure of watching a Bob Ross video at some point in your life, whether it was playing in the background on, on PBS or you um, just looked up one of his videos on YouTube. But uh, many tingle heads say that Bob Ross was the person who, um, who led them to the discovery that, hey, I, I have these weird uh, tingly experiences when I listen to his video. And uh, people realize that ASMR is actually a thing. And um, so this so listening to Bob Ross, the timbre of his, his voice, um, the sound of his paintbrushes on his palette and on his canvas, those sounds are uh, famous for eliciting tingles in the ASMR community. And now, if you look uh, at the bottom right of the screen, you will see there are Bob Ross role plays. So the ASMR painting. And uh, this particular ASMR artist does a ton of role plays and a ton of sound only ASMR videos. Uh, but I will say, um, if I had to choose between watching one of these videos for relaxation, it would be Bob Ross. Bob Ross wins every time. And if you haven't had the pleasure of watching one of his videos, you can go on YouTube where they're all uploaded. And you can watch the videos and see if they elicit any kind of uh, pleasurable response or relaxation or tingles. Rachel, move to the next slide, please. So, cinematic ASMR. There are some debates in the papers, say the Washington Post, New York Times, um, some magazines that um, say that ASMR and its content creators are just a flash in the, in the pan. This is just a trend that's gonna disappear. Um, and there's this debate between people who look at these ASMR videos and say, well, this is performance art. These are avant-garde um, productions, and this is we should really start looking at this and analyzing this as if it were art. And then there are there are people or writers who argue the opposite that th these are just YouTube videos. These are just people who are indulging their vanity and getting behind a camera and making noises and um, and you know trying to monetize this. But I would argue that if you watch a video like this. Um, this cinematic ASMR video, that it is indeed a form of art. And Rachel, if you'll go ahead and press play, and we're just going to watch about 30 seconds of it. You'll start from the beginning. Come now and get yourself comfortable. Please lay down or seek in a comfy chair. Relax and prepare for a tale about an ancient time of struggle and cunning. Okay, Rachel, you can go ahead and press pause. So, um, in, um, if you'll go back to the video. So, an audience with a banished spell scribe. I mean, just listen to the title of this video. Um, I, I have to argue that the production that goes into these videos definitely qualifies them as art, um, whether it's performance art or if you want to call it, you know, 
um, call this a film, but people, ASMR, ASMR artists and the content creators, they put a lot of thought and time and money into planning uh, videos like this that typically last 30 minutes. Um, but the, the purpose of these videos is to um, provide uh, the ASMR community or people who benefit from ASMR videos, provide them with a sense of relaxation and distraction. So um, I encourage you to go back and uh, watch watch this channel and this video because it is, I think it's, it's almost a little distracting. You're almost distracted by the richness of the production, um, but uh, over the tingly sensation, but um, I mean, it's just an all around, you know, it is a full sensory experience. And so I think that um, rightfully so content creators consider themselves artists. So if you'll scroll, scroll to the next slide. So we're gonna look at some of the ASMR genres now. And we just looked at that cinematic ASMR and we talked about uh, clinical role play, but uh, Rachel, if you'll advance to the next slide. Um, okay, so these are the four the four big ones. So when you when you go and do your deep dive into ASMR on YouTube, you are going to see um, a lot of role plays and a lot of personal attention videos. And um, I mentioned this earlier in the presentation, but the personal attention videos seem to be what um, what elicit tingles from the most people. And that is because most people can. Uh, have a memory of a time when they went and had their their hair done or had a manicure or went to a, a doctor checkup and they felt they felt a sense of relaxation and maybe tingles from that personal attention or that eye contact or the soft touches or hand gestures of um, the person attending to them so um but personal attention videos come and there's so many different kinds there are the clinical role plays um, where we saw in our first montage video at the beginning where um, uh, someone is getting an eye exam. Um, and then there are the haircut and the shaving role plays. But people also um, do role plays uh, um, as if they are lecturers, our teachers. And um, that ties into the educational ASMR videos. If you've ever wanted to learn a second language, but the idea of learning a second second language stresses you out or bores you, you can go onto YouTube and find an ASMR video for almost any language. So um, for instance, there are thousands of videos of, um, of people teaching Russian in ASMR style. So they, um, they really exaggerate the tapping or the writing of a word or the pronunciation of a word. And there are also um, full history full history lectures on, on different topics from around the world that you can find in um, as ASMR videos. So if you're interested in learning about um, a topic or, uh, or I mean, anything like um, even about a hobby, you can now go on YouTube and find an ASMR video about that hobby or topic or language. Um, as you saw with the other, uh, the Bob Ross role play video, there are thousands of role play videos. And um, people may think this is silly, but uh, they they are really popular. And uh, some of it, you some of the role play videos you watch, and you think, oh, okay, this person was first a, a cosplayer, and they you can tell they go they go to cosplay conventions, and they decided to uh, marry their their love of cosplay and of ASMR into these wonderful productions. So um, you can find almost any type of um, I don't know, like role play with ASMR videos. And then of course, some of the favorite videos are the no talking videos. And those are the videos where you see maybe a lot of hand gestures, um, a lot of tapping, wooden blocks uh, being tapped together, even sponges being rubbed together or um, crinkly paper. On, that, on the video we saw at the beginning, at the very end, we ended with um, a video of a woman writing in a crinkly notebook. And so that was a prop she created uh, specifically to elicit tingles. And because she had she had people request this in the comments of her videos, 
hey, can you please make a video writing on crinkly paper? Because I've discovered that really makes me tingle. So if you go to any of these videos, you will see that people are commenting, showing their, uh, sharing their support, but also requesting that these ASM artists create specific types of content that these people already know um, help them relax. And that's one of the things that's so fun about the ASMR community on YouTube is that you can you can feel like you're connecting with these ASM artists because they go through those comments and they will create a video specifically for you per your request. Okay, if you'll move on to the next slide. So in some of the videos, you will see the ASM artists talk in multiple uh, talk using multiple microphones. And one of the most famous microphones you'll see in ASMR videos, um, it's it's the one featured in the in the center here that has what looks like two ears on the side. And Rachel, if you'll scroll to the next slide for a better view. So when I first saw this in an ASMR video, I thought, what am I looking at? <laughs> I had no idea they even made microphones that looked like this. But um, as I was doing more research, this type of microphone was uh, started to be produced after the rise of ASM artists. So it was like a, it was a demand thing. So ASM artists started to incorporate these microphones, which I have. Uh, I, it's important to note that these can range from a thousand dollars to three thousand dollars. So that's how much money these people are investing in in making these videos. But um, the way these microphones work is that ASM artists can whisper into one side of the microphone, which is meant to make you feel like they're whispering in your ear, and then go and whisper in the other ear. So the sound is is split, and it's meant to create an effect when you're wearing headphones as if they are right behind you or in front of you, whispering in one ear or whispering in the other. So when you're if you're exploring ASMR for the first time and you see a lot of uh, videos that use these these mics, the the reason for it is that it it's supposed to elicit more tingles by shifting the sound from ear to ear when they speak into it. Okay, you can advance to the next slide. So yes, so the num number one tingle tip is to use um, a pair of headphones. So the ASMR videos are meant to be enjoyed with headphones and you're meant to be in a relaxed setting. So I have to say, I do not recommend listening to ASMR videos while you are driving or while you are supposed to be awake and alert uh, because it can have it can have the opposite effect on you it can make you feel relaxed and sleepy so uh, definitely do not listen to asmr while driving um but so asmr videos you're you're meant to listen to them with headphones and there are you know sound canceling headphones that you can invest in or you can just use the simple um earbuds that come with your your telephone uh your cell phone excuse me or um you know your your iPod. So it doesn't have to be fancy to work and to help you feel the experience and to give you tingles. Um, for me, I've discovered that I can just listen to ASMR on my phone while it's sitting on my nightstand or on my desk. And I will still have the same, I will still experience tingles. It may not be as intense um, as if I were wearing headphones, but um, I still experience tingles that way. There are some people um, that have commented, uh, that I, I saw in, in my research that have commented that they will not experience tingles unless they have the headphones, their earbuds in. So it all depends. You have to explore and see what works for you. Okay, you can move to the next slide. Here are some of the, um, the, the best headphones you can use if you want to invest in headphones specifically for listening to ASMR. And these are the top rated for comfort or um, for sound quality or for the way they um, they fit into your ear. So uh, the one we see, the first one we see here, the Acoustic Sheep Sleep Phones Wireless, these were created with ASMR in mind. So people who like to fall asleep listening to educational ASMR or lectures or videos or music, um, will want to invest in this type of headphone. It's basically a band that some of them have the, the eye cover, but it wraps around your head and the headphones are inside the band. So you pull it down over your ear and you don't have to worry about falling asleep in your earbuds 
or your clunky headphones like that and them getting messed up or tangled around your neck or anything like that. So if you are one of those people who uh, want to fall asleep to white noise or ASMR videos, you are definitely going to want to invest in one of these uh, these headbands that have the headphones built in and the eye covers built in. I typically use earbuds. I haven't invested in the acoustic sheep yet, but that's on, on my list to, to purchase. Okay, Rachel, you can go to the next slide. Okay, so we've been talking about ASMR and I know I've mentioned a few times that uh, over the past five years, we've seen a rise in its popularity. But if we go back and look at that graph, we see there's a, a big spike in popularity around um, the beginning of 2019. And you can advance to the next slide, Rachel. And that is because there was a Super Bowl ad that featured ASMR. And I'll tell you, when this ad came out, the, the ASMR community went crazy online. They were so excited that something that, um, that they viewed as taboo or you know a subculture that wasn't respected, um, they were so excited to see ASMR enter the mainstream via a Super Bowl ad. And I have to say, uh, if you have the time later to look up or listen to the, um, the, the Brain Tingles Super Bowl ad, I highly recommend it. It is, it is very, very well executed. Um, but we also see a rise in YouTube channels for, uh, for uh, publications like W Magazine. They started to feature celebrities um, encountering ASMR for the first time or um, making their own ASMR videos. And they are hilarious. I recommend watching those. Um, I was completely thrown when I just by chance stumbled across an IKEA ad that was done in ASMR. And I have watched that IKEA ad more times than I can tell you because it is so well, so well done. So I definitely recommend, I know the idea of, you know, uh, commercializing ASMR um, and using it as, you know, for profit, that kind of, that bothers me. But as we all know, with any trend, anything popular online on the, or on the, um, the internet, it's at some point going to be commercialized and used for profit. But um, so the, the last one here, you see the Reese's promotion. So uh, the lady you see here, her name is Maria and she is from Russia and her channel is called Gentle Whispering. And she is my all time favorite ASM artist. But she recently, the past few years, started to do paid promotions. And when you go into the video, it'll tell you if it's a paid promotion. But she did a paid promotion last year for um, Reese's peanut butter cups and it was amazing and I did want to eat Reese's peanut butter cups after watching the video but it's worth watching just for the sounds alone but so this is how we've we've seen over the past few years ASMR enter the mainstream it's through these um, through commercialized content and through these paid promotions so that's something to note when you are looking for ASMR videos if that's something that turns you off um, then you can look in the video blurb or when the video starts it lets you know if it's a paid promotion that's not your thing, you can move on. There are thousands of videos that are not paid promotions that are simply um, created for the love and effect of ASMR. Okay, you can go to the next slide. So uh, as we're wrapping up the presentation here, I have to point out that you can find tingle triggers in our library databases. So Rachel, if you'll go to the next slide. A bit of relaxation and in some people, including Michael Marshall. What's going on? Brain tingles. There we go. Contents. One, genuine benefits. Full text. Videos of people folding towels or painting can trigger a mysterious state of relaxation in some people, including Michael Marshall. What's going on? A few years okay, ago, you can press pause. I sat down in my home office and. So I have to point out that if you go into some of our EBSCO databases, you have the option to listen to the entire article in an American, British, or Australian accent. Listening to someone talk in a British accent gives me tingles. So of course, if I have the option, I'm gonna listen to the article in a British accent, and this may elicit tingles from other people. So just so you know, if you're looking for some educational tingles, go into our EBSCO databases and uh, mess around with the, the accent and press play, and then just tingle and learn at the same time. Okay, you can go to the next slide. 
I also want to point out on our finals week online lib guide, which is curated by uh, Rachel, um, we created an ASMR playlist. And you'll notice on this ASMR playlist, there's some library ambiance um, that I that I put on this list. So it's considered ASMR or background noise, white noise. So um, a lot of the videos that are featured here on the finals week lib guide have more to do with concentration and studying. So it's just the ambient sounds you would hear in the background of a cafe or a library. Um, there are a couple on there that do have to do with maybe kittens purring or eating food on camera. If that's your thing, then you'll find that on this live guide. Um, if you'll go to the next slide, Rachel. I also wanna point out that on our YouTube channel um, and uh, our yoga and meditation live guide, you can find um, Jane's yoga videos, which include an aspect of meditation at the end, and sometimes she does use a sound bowl. So if that's something that gives you tingles or relaxation, you want to make sure to check out the our yoga and meditation lib guides and playlist on our YouTube channel. Okay, you can advance to the next slide. So a book came out a few years ago called Brain Tingles, and this researcher uh, wrote a book and created a website to accompany the book called ASMR University. Had this website existed five years ago when I first started researching ASMR, it would have made my life a lot easier. But if you are if you want to research more about ASMR and you don't want to just go onto Google, you can just um, go directly to this website, ASMR University. Uh, I think it's .com or .org. And um, everything that you could possibly ask or want to know about ASMR as far as the, the science and the art of ASMR is um, curated here by the this author and researcher on this website. So I highly recommend visiting that for more research about ASMR. OK, if you'll advance to the next slide. So now a couple questions to consider, and we may not have time, but if you want to answer these, please feel free to in the chat box. But um, I'm always curious to know how people first heard about ASMR or if how they first experienced ASMR. And um, if you want to answer any of these and unmute, please feel free. And I also would like to know how likely are you to explore ASMR for sleep and relaxation after this presentation? So some of you may have never heard of ASMR, um, but I'd like to know if you are inspired to to find your ASMR trigger after this presentation. So we have a comment from Jane, and uh, she says that some other people she knows, that they do healing with sound bowls, and it's amazing. Yes, it's another form of sound therapy. Um, the, the frequencies from sound bowls are known to elicit intense states of relaxation. And I do get tingles from listening to sound bowls. So I like when those are included in yoga and meditation videos. Um, but yeah, feel free to answer any of these questions in the comments or unmute. But Rachel, you want to go to the next slide? This is the Q&A part. So I asked you a couple of questions. If you have any questions, feel free to unmute and ask. Um, I can't promise I'll know the answer to all of your questions, but I will, uh, I will do some research and send you links if I don't know the answer. And if anyone doesn't have any particular questions, uh, you can go to the next slide. And I just have references of some of the research I pulled from our library databases um, listed here. But again, uh, everything is linked to you in the presentation and I'm happy to answer any questions that I can. Um, and I am I would love to know if you are going to uh, try out ASMR after this presentation. Definitely gonna look into it. I think there's a lot of really interesting stuff out there that I was not aware of. Um, There's a lot of love for sound bowls. Apparently ASMR was being used on Japanese television in the early aughts. Oh, wow, yeah. There is a genre of just a lady teaching Josha, which Jane has posted the link to. Um, right, and Jane mentioned that the montage we watched at the beginning, none of those gave her tingles or did anything for her. Yeah, so, Clin uh, clinical no, the exams. One, James all right, the, the one that didn't do anything for me or the ones that don't do anything are those really um, 
really elaborate role play ones, like the the spell scroll lady. That that the doesn't cinematic do one. Yeah, yeah. But the personal attention ones, hundred percent do. Yeah, right. Now I feel I feel somewhat lucky because almost every video we showed in this presentation or video that I encounter um, triggers some kind of tingle response for me. But I will say some of my favorites do um, are just mundane chores being performed and in, in whispered about, uh, such as the folding towels. <laughs> um, there are quite a few folding towel ASMR videos that really relax me and make me tingle. And um, I'm, I'm kind of embarrassed to admit that, but it's true. And of course, in the montage, you'll notice that I lingered on some of my favorites, which were the flipping to the pages of the library book. Um, I think that's probably one of the reasons why um, I've always loved libraries is because the sounds that the books make, not just the smells of the books, but the sounds of the books. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely a tingle head. And uh, I know the past few years, ASM artists are, have tried to um, kickstart fund an ASMR documentary and um, put together ASMR conventions. So as soon as there's an ASMR convention here in Houston, uh, you can be sure that I will be visiting that convention <laughs> and I'll bring back what I learned here and share with everyone. All right. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. I feel like I've learned a massive amount about ASMR and I'm going to have to look up some of these ASMR videos and give them a shot and see if it does anything for me. Um, we have some comments from Lori that she hadn't heard of it. It's very interesting. She'll probably check it out. Jane is saying super interesting and thank you. And thank you so much for coming to life this morning and giving us a sound bite of life through ASMR. And next week, we are going to be discussing fostering dogs with Tracy Williams, who's another of our reference librarians, and Angie from Golden Beginnings Golden Retriever Rescue, which I'm really excited about that. And they're going to talk about the fostering process of, you know, how do you foster an animal? What's involved? Um, how do you care for them? And that sort of thing. And that's actually become really popular during the pandemic is fostering animals and taking care of them. So join us next week at 10 a.m. here at LIFE and we will see you then. Thank you so much, thank Regina. You. Thanks.